so he's flipping this. It, it, they were so radical back in the 80s and 90s. One of the one of the um, men of God that I talked to, I thought about saying his name, but I'm not. He he said back then we had to we had to get so grounded in the word. We had to do all this radical stuff because God wasn't coming forever. He's like, we didn't know that, but that's what God had. He had a plan for us because he knew it was going to be 40 or 50 years before he returned. Now it's different with us. Our parents really have laid a legacy. You know, my parents, grandma and grandpa, the things that they've been through. You know, Bishop, Tony Tamil, uh, Pastor Frank, they laid this legacy, this radical legacy. And now this new age church has been quiet, but we can't be silent anymore. I've heard this quoted a lot. It's in 2 Timothy. It says, In the last days there's going to be very difficult times, right? People will love only themselves and their money. They will be boastful and proud, scoffing at God, disobedient to their parents and ungrateful. They're going to consider nothing sacred. They'll be unloving and unforgiving. They will slander others and they will have no self-control. They will be cruel and what they will be cruel and hate what is good. They will betray their friends, be reckless, be puffed up with pride, and love pleasure rather than good. They will act religious, but they will reject the power that could make them godly. Mm -hmm. Stay away from people like that. Mm -hmm. That sounds like today. Mm -hmm. But that's been prophesied, right? God's coming to call us home. I can't wait. But when you think about it, this vaccine now where we are, it's kind of the beginning stages of ushering in the end times, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? We see that. I mean, I think everybody's on board with that. We even almost stopped talking about the end times because we're like, we're living in the Bible in real time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now you can't buy or sell with the, with the vaccine. I don't think that the vaccine is the virus, or, or is the mark of the beast. I don't, I don't believe that, okay? But what I do believe it's prequel. It is a conditioning. Mm -hmm. It is a type and shadow. It is something that is, you know, if, if now you can't keep your job, well, now we're thinking about getting the vaccine. Get it, don't get it, it's up to you. I, I believe it's a free country. You should do whatever you want to do. But this world is riddled with confusion mm -hmm. and a strong delusion. Mm -hmm. Society has turned politics into good versus evil. It was never like that back in the day. Manipulation is at an all-time high. The spirit of control is continually gaining more ground. Now you're getting money every month just for having a kid. Mm -hmm. You know, make no mistake. That's manipulation. That's control. They want to give you money so that you can depend on them. Mm -hmm. Well, then the government is trying to make all your decisions for you. Mm -hmm. Are they helping you? Sure. But I've always seen that if the government tells me to do one thing, I'm doing the other thing. Because I don't know, you know. I'm not saying the Illuminati is real or not real and all that stuff. It, it very well might be real. I don't know. But the fear mongering too, that's at an all time high. Mm -hmm. This is what the Bible says. This is for the kids. Izzy, listen. The Bible says perfect love casts out fear. Mm -hmm. That's in 1 John. A couple of verses before that it says God is love. So if you put that together, God casts out all fear, right? Mm -hmm. So as long as we have the Lord, we shouldn't be afraid of all these things that are going on, right? Mm -hmm. God is going to be with us, mm -hmm. right? You're consecrated to God. You know the scriptures. You know where we are in the book, right? Mm -hmm. We shouldn't be afraid of what's going on, but I think that through the fear, the manipulation, and the control, it's trying to, it's trying to keep the remnant down. Yeah. Enough with the fear. Enough with the uncertainty. We're not battling against flesh and blood. Mm -hmm. We have so many biblical promises in Christ. Yeah. This remnant is going to be born again. God-fearing saints are going to be kingdom-minded. Mm -hmm. We're going to stand up and we're going to be the church. Amen. My brother Marcus on YouTube, he always says, uh, the sons and daughters of God will clash with the, the small g, God's of science. Mm -hmm. That's what's going to happen. Yep. Yeah. We're going to clash. Mm -hmm. We aren't fighting against people. We're fighting the Antichrist agenda. Mm -hmm. Notice something. The Antichrist agenda is nothing more than a copycat. Mm -hmm. Everything about the devil is a copycat. Mm -hmm. When you look at society, he tried to say the word, uh, Joe Biden was saying the word unity about a hundred times. And I'm thinking, hey, that's a God word. How are you copying that? Mm -hmm. Right? Everything the enemy does is copying the Lord. Mm -hmm. 
It takes godly principles and twists them. Since when do we say we should all get this vaccine or because people or, or because we love people we should be vaccinated? That's using love as a manipulation too as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, you're taking it and you're saying, hey, if you love your family, you should get vaccinated. It's like, dude, I'm so sick of hearing about this vaccine. Mm-hmm. Do it or don't, you know? Yes. But why are you using this as such a strong tool to manipulate me? Mm-hmm. We need to recognize who we're fighting here. Mm-hmm. We're fighting against evil. The spiritual warfare is at an all-time high. Yes. I don't know if you guys are big movie watchers, but to me, I always think about the cover of that movie, 300. And I think that's how the spiritual warfare is right now. It's like these huge, you know, just the spiritual warfare is intense. Yes. And we don't even know. We're just walking around like, mm-hmm. we need to stand on these promises that God has given us. Yeah. We need to put our faith into action. We need to believe God for provision for what God has in store for us. Mm-hmm. It's time to dig in. Yep. It's time to stand up and be the church. In Acts two seventeen, Paul re- he reiterates what the prophet Joel said, and this was centuries before. This is a huge prophetic word. The prophet Joel said that in the last days I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions, and your old men will dream dreams. This is a promise. In the book of Mark, it says these miraculous signs will follow those who believe. They will cast out demons in his name, and they will speak in new languages. A little further down, it says we will be able to lay our hands on the sick, and they will be healed. Mm. How exciting. Mm -hmm. How exciting to be able to lay hands on the sick, and they will be healed. I believe that's going to happen. Amen. Last week when we prayed, we got together, and we prayed, and the Lord told me, go grab the oil. Go grab the oil. I thought, you know what, God, I gotta go get the oil. And mom said, I got it. So I'm thinking, okay, we're laying hands on people with the oil. Never my intention. It does say it in the Bible. We are supposed to do that. Throughout the week, my mom texted me at like 3 o'clock in the morning. And I don't want to read your text. Because I received every bit of it. And I think the oil had everything to do with it. Um, she texted me and my sister. See, my mom and my sister were, 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 were crazy. <laughs> He <laughs> said, God gave me this verse, and it's the verse in Matthew about the loaves and the fishes and how God multiplied them. And that was a miraculous miracle right in front of them, right? And she said, God told me that miracles, signs, and wonders are going to start to happen during services with us because he wants to show that we are a new covenant church mm-hmm. and we're going to walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. 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 <laughs> to me, Mm. You gotta believe it before it happens. Yes, yeah. Amen. You Amen. Gotta, you gotta say it. It's gonna happen. I believe it. Yeah. Amen. You know, there's gonna Amen. be people in here that are gonna yeah. feel. Amen. 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 And John, Jesus is talking to the disciples, and he says, "Anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done, and even greater." Yep. Amen. When Jesus revealed Himself to Thomas, you know the doubting Thomas, He told him, "You believe because you see me." But blessed are those who believe without seeing me. Mm. That's us. Yeah. We're the ones that haven't seen God. Right. Yep. But we believe. Mm-hmm. This is that time. We should be excited. Yeah, right? amen. Because what we're walking into, it's going to be an exciting time. Amen. I believe it. I believe this place is going to fill, and I believe we're going to grow out of here. Yes, amen. Um, I want to read Psalms 91 together. So if you guys brought your Bibles and you want to open that up, <laughs> I'll read it, but we can follow along. Um, kids, I, you know, I heard one say shut your phone off, but I think they should bring their Bibles because they can follow along in Scripture. But if you guys have it, Psalms 91. If everybody's there, say amen. Amen. Remember, God didn't give us the spirit of fear. Right. The whole, the whole thing. Psalm 91, chapter 91, verse 1. Let this be a prayer. Let this come right from your heart. Those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God and I trust Him. For He will rescue you from every trap and protect you from every deadly disease. He will cover you with his feathers. He will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises are your armor and protection. 
Do not be afraid of the terrors of the night, nor the arrow that flies in the day. Do not dread the disease that stalks in the darkness, nor the disaster that strikes at midday. Through a thousand fall at your side, though ten thousand are dying around you. These evils will not touch you. Just open your eyes and see how the wicked are punished. If you make the Lord your refuge, if you make the Most High your shelter, no evil will conquer you. No plague will come near your home. For he will order his angels to protect you wherever you go. They will hold you up with your hand, so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. You will trample upon lions and cobras. You will crush fierce lions and serpents under your feet. The Lord says, I will rescue you, those who love me. I will protect those who trust in my name. When they call on me, I will answer. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them, and I will reward them with a long life and give them my salvation. Amen. 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 That's good. Amen. amen. These are promises, man. This is stuff I want to pray over my family. Yes. This is stuff you can hold on to. God told you he's going to protect you. Stick with him. Trust him. He is your refuge. Mm -hmm. Jesus said we are the light of the world. Mm -hmm. That's what the remnant is all about. Yes. Amen. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's right. This remnant ministry started back in 2014. Mm -hmm. I never had any of this in my mind. Somebody said to me the other day, well, you, 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 taught your, you preached your first message last week. She said, what are you going to preach now? You've been waiting your whole life to preach that. I said, no, I haven't. I never grew up. I thought I was going to be a basketball player. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't work. I was 5'7". You know? <laughs> I never had any of this in my mind, ever. I remember reaching out to Don and Alice at Parkway Church in 2012. I had just came to the Lord two years. In 2010, I find, in 2010 is when I gave my life to God. I rec recommitted my life to God. And I, uh, I'm not going to give my whole testimony. I'm just going to talk about this ministry. But in 2012, I reached out to Don Malice and I said, Hey, I run a company. <laughs> I've been serving the Lord faithfully. And my life has been changed. If you have anything you need my help with. And that was my email to him. And I couldn't. I couldn't find an email. I wanted to read it to you guys because I remember it, I read it a couple of years ago. It was very innocent, very dumb, very like, I don't care. I'll do anything. I'll go clean the toilet if you want, whatever. <laughs> and uh, somehow he pushed me through to Bishop. Well, Bishop, throughout my um, time at Parkway, was invested in me because I, I kept screwing up. Yeah. And I thought he was going to kick me out of church because I kept messing up so much. <laughs> But Bishop always, he had he had a soft spot for me. And so Bishop ended up giving me this ministry called Celebrate Recovery. Mm. And he met up with me and he gave me this ministry. And this ministry called Celebrate Recovery, it's totally based on hurts, habits, and hang-ups. I think it's a phenomenal ministry. Mm -hmm. I think it's like a, a, a Christian AAA. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important. We never It never took off. We, we put some time into it, blood, sweat, and tears. You know, but it, it never took off real well. But I think we learned a lot. We built a lot of relationships with church from that. Um, he believed in me through the whole process. Uh, he saw past my mistakes. He never gave up on me. So that was my first ministry. And then fast forward to 2014, and Pastor Tim Peters came on the scene. I was in charge of organizing basketball at the church. And we've always played basketball growing up. That's been our thing. And so what Don would do, he's the church facilitator, is he would say, hey, um, if you guys want to play basketball at church for free, you got to help people move. You guys got to help set up the church. You guys got So that was sort of the give and take. Well, he emailed me one day and he goes, we have this new guy coming to live here. His name is Tim Peters. We need you to get some guys together to help him move. That's how I met Pastor Tim. Um, I had no idea that he was going to be a big part of my life. No clue. In 2015, I got a word from God, and the word was, um, the Lord told me your training starts today. I had no idea what that meant. It, it, stuff wrecks me because when God tells me things, I'm always like, okay, what does that mean? How does that line up? Yeah. You know, I want to see what, what yeah. does that mean tomorrow? Right. Tomorrow my life has changed. Here we are. <laughs> my training starts. <laughs> and I, I didn't know what it meant, so I, I, I pondered about it. And Eileen... Eileen Falky and Pastor Tim ended up giving me the hyphen ministry in 2016. So I, I, then I got hyphen. Um, Pastor Tim was the leader of hyphen in the section. 
And so he was a big hyphen advocate. He loved it. He wanted to pass it down to Parkway. He wanted to introduce it, so he gave it to me. I tried my best. <laughs> I worked my tail off. 2016, uh, or 2015, from September to 2016, we, I worked my tail off on that. We relaunched it again in March of 2016. I think I started to build some momentum, but it was a really difficult ministry. But I worked my tail off, right? I gave all my time to it. Um, it, it was a big deal. At that time, I worked really close with Pastor Tim, and he loved hunting just as much as I did. So we started to hunt together. And so hunting together meant spending a lot of time in the woods, spending a lot of time driving. So I, would, I poured my, my guts out to him. He, he learned about me. He knew who I was. And the two things he discovered is, he said, number one, every time I ask you, do you know who sister so-and-so was, you tell me no. He goes, dude, go meet the people in your church. I know more people in your church than you. You've been here since you're like six years old. <laughs> I was like, okay, I get, I get that. I received that. I'll try to do that. And then uh, the second thing was, is he told me to journal. He challenged me to journal. I teased him. I'm like, I'm not journaling, diary, you know. Why would I do that? That's so woman-ish. <laughs> so, you know, what I thought is I heard a message being preached one time, and I thought, you know what? I'll just journal everything God has done in my life. So the first thing in my journal was 2015. God told me, your training starts today. So I started to journal this stuff. Um, and from 2015 to 2018, the roller coaster of ministry was just crazy. I guarantee you, your faith would be increased by reading my journal. <laughs> my journal has so many things that God has done for me. That's why ain't nobody going to tell me God ain't real. Mm -hmm. God Amen. has done so many different things in my life that I'm telling you, I go back and I can see it. Amen. So you guys Amen. ever want to journal? It's a great pastime. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to remember, but it's hard to remember to do it every day. But I'm telling you, you can go back to that thing. Mm. Yeah. You know, some of the biggest things I go back to, me and Jenny are arguing about the same stuff we argued about in 2018. That's so true. Yeah. Good. <laughs> it was 2018 when God started prompting me to go to Purpose Institute. Purpose Institute is, uh, you guys know what that is, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It's a Bible-based apostolic ministers institution through the UPCI. Uh, this was life-changing for me. Corey was just telling me about it. Uh, usually a pastor would tell you, hey, go to UPCI, go to, go, go to the institute so that you can get your license so I can push you through to get your license in the UPCI, okay? Pastor Tim never told me to do this, never once. God was prompting me to go to go to UP, uh, go to PI. So as God prompted me, it was the spring of 2018, and I was like, I'm not doing that. That's too much time and commitment. Then the fall came, and I didn't want to do it again. I'm like, I got to hunt. I'm be hunting. I can't do that. And God was just nudging me, do it, do it, do it. So one day, it was a Sunday morning, I went to my mom to say hi to her in church. And I gave her a hug and gave her a kiss, and she kind of, she grabbed me like this, and she goes, stop it. Stop procrastinating and go to PI already. I was like, woman, how do you even know this? You know? But my mom is, she's always in this, uh, she, 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 she works in this gift of the prophetic. She can speak into your life. She can read your mail. Um, she, she knows what's going on. The gift is real. Yes. The gift is real. Yes. I mean, this tell you something and you're like, how do you even know this? Yep. So for me, I, I grew up with a mother like this, okay? Mm -hmm. So for me, I want God to tell me. And if she wants to confirm it, that's fine. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. That's how I am. Okay? God's got to tell me. And then you can confirm. Because you guys, you know what? This is a side note. If somebody tells you that, hey, I think you should move to Africa, you can't just go move to Africa. You got to make sure God is telling you yeah. to move to Africa. Yeah, right? yeah, you know? yeah. Oh, I had a dream. And it says that you, you know, oh, I'm sorry. Don't listen to that crazy stuff. <laughs> um, so then in September of 2018, right when the sem semester started, I started to go to um, PI. And as I'm in PI, I'm just 
just falling in love with God all over again. Amen. I remember driving home on Friday nights because we have sir, uh, PI service on Saturday, Friday nights, and I'd be driving home and I'd be texting my mom and my sister. Yep. And I'm like, you guys, you can't believe, you know, they're sleeping. It's like 10.30. Like, you can't believe what they just talked about today. You know, because the Bible is alive, yes. you guys. Yeah. Yeah. It it's alive. Yeah. And there's nothing better than when you love the Word of God yeah. and you sit with somebody else who loves the yeah. Word of God yeah. and you talk about the Word of God and they say something, you're like, I just read that. Yeah. I know what that means. Yeah. 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 And so I would come home on a Friday night and she would be half asleep and I'd be talking to her off and she's like, hey. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. But I mean, this, this like skyrocketed me. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And I've always been, because of my mom and my sister, for years, we've always listened to podcasts and preaching and all this yeah. stuff. We've always done that. And Mondays are my fast days. So every Monday, I fast. And at that time, I was fasting, and I would have the house to myself. So I come home on my lunch, and I pray. And I walk around my house, and I pray. In the bedrooms, on, on my wife's pillow, Amen. on my son's pillow, every Monday, walk through my house. And one day I was listening to this sermon. I'm not going to tell you who it was by, um, but God revealed to me I was supposed to start a church. And I remember like it was yesterday when God, I, I had my headphones in and I was at home and I was walking around on the island and I'm like, yes, Lord, I'm going to do it. I promise you. I promise. I took my headphones out and I started running around and I was like, I know it because it was like, God showed me. He's like, that's what you're going to do. I received it. And from that point forward, I was scared to death. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm thinking, now what? Yeah, yes, exactly. God told me this is what I got to do, now what? So the first thing I did is I told my buddy Eddie. I was like, hey, guess what? God told me I should start a, minute. I start, start a church. He goes, okay, that's random. Anyway. <laughs> we talked about this before. And I said, okay. I said, don't say nothing. Just pray Pray. Yep. I said, please don't tell no one. Pray, pray with me. Okay. So when I went to work, I told my sister. I said, hey, mom, God told me I'm supposed to start a church. Um, and I'm supposed, I felt like I'm supposed to do it with mom and dad and you. I said, but don't tell nobody. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just pray. <laughs> right? This is true. Yep. So I didn't say nothing to anybody. <laughs> we started praying about this. And we went on with our lives like nothing was happening. Then... My wife was offered this new job at a new company. And this was in February. So that was September of 2018. Now this is February of 2019. Mm -hmm. She's offered a new job. We were sitting upstairs in this room and she's making arrangements with her contract. Like they wanted to offer her and doing that. And as the clearest day, just like God told me to grab that oil, that was the same exact voice. God said, you got two years. <laughs> two years for what? <laughs> And, it, and it, it just reiterated in my head, you got two years, you got two years, you got two years. And I'm thinking, two years? Mm -hmm. What am I supposed to do with my parents? They haven't even said anything to me yet. Right. You know, but I told Monica, I said, look, we're not going to say nothing to mom and dad. They have to reveal it to me. Mm -hmm. I said, we're going to put that piece before God. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So we've been waiting now. This is February 2019. God gives me a two-year time frame. All right? So now, fast forward to June of 2019. I'm at the shop, I'm in front of the computer, I'm typing away doing my work, my dad comes in at his normal schedule time of 9 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's 8.30, I'm teasing. <laughs> <laughs> and he comes in and he sits over the printer and he puts on it and he goes, I was praying this morning, bro. And he goes, God told me something. And he said, are you ready for this? Don't freak out. And I said, what? And he goes, he said, he wants us to start a church. You're going to be the leader. Mm. And we got two years. Yeah. No joke, bro. No <laughs> joke. I believe it. I believe it. Yeah. I just started crying. <laughs> I just started crying. Amen. I was like, God, you got, Johnny's going to kill me. You know? <laughs> 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 so from June of 2019 to August today, God worked us over in such a mighty way. Amen. Yeah. Amen. We didn't leave Parkway because we're upset. Right? No. We didn't leave Parkway because there was um, a leadership change and I wasn't getting along with Pastor Tim. 
I look part way because God told me to do something. I gotta do it. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I, I believe I'm gonna be in some growing pains. I believe it's gonna be a lonely place, mm -hmm. but I know that with God with me, yep. He's gonna free the people. God has yep. confirmed it so Amen. many Amen. times. Uh, God, I told you guys last week, God told me you're going to have a ministry because we're the church. Yep. Uh -huh. I don't need to have a church. We're the church. Yeah. Uh -huh. We're just going to have a ministry. Yeah. Yeah. Just, um, I did not leave under the UPCI heading. Um, they did not say I'm a daughter work. Me and Pastor Tim are on very good terms. Um, so everything there is fine. He gave me a blessing to leave, uh, but I'm not going to be in the UPCI. Mm -hmm. So you guys can understand why he, it's not like, hey, they're going to do a ministry. So I am kind of out of my own, but I'm doing what God told me to do. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. This is how I know that we're the remnant church. Uh -huh. During the pandemic, I believe the Lord was allowing this church to be broken. In 1 Peter 4, 17 and 18, it says, For the time has come for judgment, and it must begin with God's household. Yep. Mm -hmm. God is exposing some of the stuff in our lives. Amen. He's given us the opportunity to wake up. If judgment begins with us, what terrible fates awaits those who never even obeyed God's word? Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, if the righteous are barely saved, what happens to the godless sinners? Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm. <coughs> this is that threshing floor I was talking about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jesus is allowing the church to have this new and fresh pro provision, yep. a new purpose. I googled what this threshing floor was about, and it's described this way. It's the sheaves of grain that would be opened up, and the stalks are going to be spread across the threshing floor. Then you got donkeys, or cattle, or horses, but they're going to walk around, and they're going to drag this threshing floor board behind them. And what it does is it tears the ears of grain from the stalks. And it loosens the grain from the husks. Mm -hmm. And this is the process of threshing, it's called. And it separates the useful from the unuseful. Mm. The bad from the good. That's the, good. The resilient Ooh. from the unresilient. That's good. You guys felt any pressure lately? <laughs> Things aren't turning out the way they hoped for? Uh. Mm -hmm. Anyone feel uncomfortable? Mm. This is God. This is what he's allowing to happen in your life. God is testing you. He's growing you. He's maturing uh -huh. you. Uh -huh. These are going to be the saints that are going to do something. Amen. We need to understand. We need to trust God in believe everything. That. Mm -hmm. right. Believe that. This is the reason God had flipped our whole script. Mm -hmm. Amen. The Bible says that there will be a strong delusion in the last days. Mm -hmm. But the people who are woke, they're going to be the ones to see it. It's Amen. good. It's apostolic discernment. Amen. God is moving us into a realm where we will operate in the natural and the spiritual with godly authority. Amen. Right. Amen. Right. How is this going to happen? Because we're going to be consecrated to God daily. Yes. We've been beaten up for a little bit, but we know where our strength lies. Amen. Amen. We understand that the cares of this world are not ours. Mm -hmm. yeah. As you read the Bible, you will see where so much stuff comes on the threshing floor. Amen. Here's the best example I found. King David's story. It's in 2 Samuel chapter 24. It's towards the end of King David's life. And he just committed a great sin. Mm -hmm. he, he counted the people. Mm. He had a census. Now, the people had to suffer a plague for three days because of David. And he was so vexed. And in order to end the plague, the prophet Gad told David he needed to sacrifice at this altar at this guy's threshing floor. And when David approached this man, he said, look, I need your threshing floor. I need to make an altar. I need to sacrifice there in order to end this plague for my people. And the guy goes, take it. You can have it. Do your altar. Make your sacrifice. And David goes, no, I can't take it. Mm -hmm. It's got to cost me something. Mm -hmm. I got to pay you for this. And David gave him all kinds of money to pay him for that threshing floor. Because you know what? In order to do something for God, mm -hmm. it's going to cost you something. Yeah, amen. That same threshing floor that David purchased is the floor that they used to build the first temple. Amen. And that was his son mm -hmm. who built that temple. Amen. That's what's going to cost right now. That's what's going on today. We're getting sifted. We're going through it. Amen. But you know what? Why are we doing that? Because God says, there's too much carnality, guys. Yeah. 
Yeah. You care too much about what people think, you guys. Yeah. yeah. You care yeah. too much about how you look, you guys. Yeah. yeah. It's got to be about me. Yeah. Right? Amen. That's the only way we're gonna. That's the only way we're gonna walk into what God has for us. Yeah. That's yeah. it. This is where you find yourself putting your life under a microscope. Mm -hmm. This is where you become kingdom minded. Mm -hmm. You see, serving the Lord, making sure you're doing what He calls you to do, it makes you give up everything. In 1 Corinthians 9, me and Jenny were talking about this. It was 19, 22 to 20, 19 through 23. Paul talks about how he had to be all things for all people. And so when Paul was with the Jews, he had to eat like the Jews. When he was with the Gentiles, he ate with the Gentiles. He didn't commit all these crazy sins. But he just said, hey, I'm going to love you guys where you are. I'm going to love you guys where you are. Because you know what? We got to adapt to the people in our environment. Amen. But through love, God's going to bring the deep people. It's not going to be you. Uh -huh. But what did Paul do? He died to himself daily. Yep. That was the thing. What are you going to do? Mm. What is going to matter to you? The vaccine going to draw lines between you and friends? Mm -hmm. All right? People's political views going to make you end the friendship? Mm. What did I start off by saying? We don't fight against flesh and blood. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. We need to sell out. We need to be the church. Jesus said miracles, signs, and wonders are going to be in these services. And we're going to be a new covenant church. Amen. I believe that. Amen. We're going to have an altar call right now. Um, it's time to talk to God. Make things right. Ask for direction. Seek forgiveness. Tell God to empty you. And fill him up inside of you. Empty me, Lord. Amen. More of you, less of me. Lay your burdens down. Cast your cares. You know what? God wants you and you alone. Amen. Nobody's asking you to be radical. Nobody's asking you to do anything crazy. It's just, hey, kingdom mind. Uh -huh. Am I doing something that pleases God? That's good. Am I moving the kingdom forward? Uh -huh. We have to be kingdom mind. Amen. I'm going to have an altar call now. We'll do one song. You guys can get together and pray. Um, next week, it's going to be Monday at 5.30. I hope you guys can come, invite somebody. Uh, it'll be a fun time in the Lord. I'm not going to stop doing it. Uh, May 9th was our last service at Parkway, and every Sunday, me, Carter, and Jenny had service. We did. Right, Carter? Yeah, that was cool. <laughs> it's nice having more people here, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, if you guys would stand.